Ripple announces partnerships across MENA amid ongoing strife with SEC Ripple has had a fantastic year, with the blockchain payment startup enjoying a tremendous increase in new collaborations throughout the world. Bank Dofar, Oman's second largest bank, is the most current in the series. RippleNet will be used by the bank to deliver frictionless, cost-effective, and real-time payments. Will this partnership add to Ripple's success? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hi, Volters! Glad you can join us today and welcome to the XRP Vault, the place where you can find everything on XRP. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for us to provide you with more XRP content. Let's get to it! The content in this video is for entertainment purposes only and hence should not be considered as financial advice. All the financial decisions should be made after doing your own research. Ripple established a partnership with Bank Dovar, Oman's second largest bank on May 25th. This follows their statement last week that they would collaborate on a similar endeavor with Egypt's national bank. Ripple announced their vision for the Internet of Value in June 2017, with the primary premise that value should be shared as swiftly as information. They were concerned about the high cost and slow delivery of fiat money and sought to find a solution. They wanted to eliminate any intermediaries from the process of trading assets or making payments by using blockchain. Nevertheless, the market was flooded with a slew of competing blockchains that weren't necessarily interconnected. Industry standards had to be established first. The blockchain market has grown and gained widespread adoptions in 2017. As a result, projects like Ripple's Internet of Value have additional prospects. While Ripple's problems with the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, have been well known in recent months, the company has been growing modestly in terms of payments. The National Bank of Egypt, Egypt's largest bank, announced its cooperation with Ripple last week. They'll be cooperating with the Lulu International Exchange in the United Arab Emirates to handle cross-border payments from the UAE to Egypt over RippleNet. After India, China, Mexico, and the Philippines, Egypt received $24 billion in remittances last year, making it one of the top five remittance corridors in the world. The announcement that Ripple will collaborate with Bank Dofar opens the door to yet another of India's most important remittance routes. They are working with Bank Dofar and Indus Ind Bank, an Indian private sector bank, to deliver real-time payments to the country. Because India is the world's biggest remittance recipient, this agreement appears to be more significant than the one announced last week. Indian guest workers in the UAE and around the world send $76 billion home each year. Ripple has been fighting the SEC for a long time, and its future remains uncertain in the face of significant federal allegations. The SEC filed a case in December 2020, stating that Ripple had made an unregistered securities offering of $1.3 billion by selling XRP coins. While Ripple and its executive board dispute the claims, the investigation is still underway, and it's unclear whether Ripple will emerge unscathed. Ripple, the company behind the cryptocurrency XRP, has been embroiled in a high-stakes legal battle with the SEC since last year. In an appearance on CNBC's Squawk Box on Wednesday, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse reiterated his dissatisfaction with the lack of clarity in US regulation of digital assets. He claims that a large part of the problem with crypto regulation in the US is not the cryptocurrency players, but rather the regulators' lack of action in comparison to their worldwide counterparts. Ripple co-founder Chris Larson and Garlinghouse were charged by the SEC with conducting an illegal securities offering in which they allegedly raised more than $1.3 billion through the selling of XRP. XRP is up more than 300% year-to-date, although it has fallen far from its YTD high during the recent cryptocurrency crash. It was trading up nearly 8% on Wednesday morning amid a crypto bounce, and it was up more than 300% year-to-date. Bitcoin had recovered from its recent precipitous drop and was hanging around $40,000 on Wednesday. Ripple was placed number 38 on CNBC's Disruptor 50 list this year. The crypto business and regulators are still at odds. On May 26, the United Kingdom banned an advertisement pushing people to acquire Bitcoin, calling it irresponsible. Last Monday, a Wall Street Journal editorial piece called for a crypto ban, citing difficulties such as hackers exploiting cryptocurrencies to get paid for intrusions such as the recent Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack. 
Robin Hood This year's number one CNBC disruptor claims that 9.5 million users traded crypto on Robinhood Crypto in the first quarter of 2021, up from 1.7 million in the fourth quarter of 2020. Ripple's on-demand liquidity service employs XRP as a currency bridge, allowing payment providers and banks to conduct cross-border transactions considerably faster than they could on older payment rails, according to the company. Despite the return of crypto volatility this month, Bitcoin is still down more than 32% for the month, the largest monthly fall since 2018, while other tokens like XRP have soared to new highs this year. Ripple holds the majority of the XRP tokens in circulation and only sells a small portion of them each month. Due to power problems, Iran suspended Bitcoin mining operations on Wednesday. Concerns about energy use have prompted China to crack down on miners in recent months. The Ripple CEO has been a vocal critic of how much energy Bitcoin mining consumes, but he claims that he's far from alone in his concerns, citing Elon Musk, Bill Gates and Jack Dorsey as examples, and that Ripple is not engaged in a covert war against Bitcoin. We probably wouldn't have had an SEC complaint if Ripple could control those people, he said. Musk's Monday tweet, suggesting he was talking to Bitcoin miners about promising energy efficiency solutions, boosted Bitcoin. Ripple's board of directors was bolstered earlier this month with the appointment of former U.S. Treasury Secretary Rosie Rios. At the end of the day, I believe the industry should concentrate on utility. And are these technologies solving real problems for real customers? Garlinghouse previously told CNBC, adding that Ripple's XRP ledger and tokens will continue to be used to streamline payments. Nonetheless, if XRP is designated security in the United States, the company has threatened to relocate to other jurisdictions. As the legal struggle with the US SEC continues, Ripple Labs, the company behind XRP, has gained another crucial victory. The US SEC Commission had previously requested that Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn force Ripple to submit documents of legal advice regarding whether the XRP coin sales were in compliance with federal securities laws. Ripple's interpretation of the legal position of XRP, according to the government, would support its $1.3 billion lawsuit. The SEC wants access to Ripple's legal concerns, despite the fact that the blockchain business has refuted these allegations since the court case began in December. Judge Sarah Netburn denied the SEC's motion, stating that Ripple maintains that the SEC's requested conversations are covered by the attorney-client privilege, which has not been waived, according to a public filing. This ruling strengthened the blockchain startup's fair notice defense, which claimed that the securities regulator neglected to tell the company and other market players that XRP was an unregistered security. Judge Netburn's judgment was extremely important, according to Jeremy Hogan, an attorney who's been following the case closely because the judge argues that Ripple's subjective judgments about XRP are unrelated to the fair notice claim. This approach would block the road that the SEC intended to take in order to combat the defense. Judge Nebern highlighted that her decision is limited to this case, adding, The court takes no position on whether Ripple's stated defense is cognizable or if it will prove meritorious. The SEC stood little prospect of receiving Ripple's legal advice document unless the crypto payments business shared it with others, according to John Deaton, an attorney and community leader pushing XRP holders to intervene in the legal fight. Deaton also stated that while Judge Nebburn's judgment was a public loss for the securities regulator, it was insufficient to force the SEC to settle the lawsuit. Furthermore, Deaton consented to a statement in which a community member suggested that the ruling indicates that the judge does not believe Ripple received fair notice because the firm had legal counsel. The price of XRP appears to be experiencing a surge in selling pressure, which might cause it to plummet before its next leg up. Although the price of XRP looks to be rising, recent swing highs have been higher lows. Such market activity shows that Ripple's purchasing power is dwindling. The price of XRP is coiling up, as seen by the trend shift and many overhead hurdles. As a result, a rejection from the $1.094 to $1.183 supply zone could send Ripple lower. The $0.84 support barrier, which coincides with an ascending support trend line that dates back to the beginning of the year, appears to be the greatest area for a rebound on the way down. Investors could expect a 16% drop in the price of XRP 
to 84 cents before it begins a new upward trend. Ripple might retest the next demand zone at $0.642 if there's an increase in selling pressure around the underlying support. Regardless, the negative narrative will be debunked if a decisive daily candlestick closes above $1.183. In this instance, the bulls may be able to push the price of XRP up to $1.32, a gain of 12%. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Ripple's vast networking capabilities, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Take care, Volters, and see you next time on the XRP Vault.